going to be an interesting interview. We've had a really good lineup of guests today. Yeah. Haven't we? We have. Wow. This is, this, this is one of those uh, knock them out of the ballpark days and I, I, I know that this next one is going to fit in line with who the, the, the uh, caliber, I like the word caliber, the caliber of guests we've had yeah. already. Uh, John Schaefer is on the phone. Jack Schaefer, is at, as he's known on his uh, as a, his author, his pen name, mm-hmm. Jack Schaefer. I guess Jack yep. is his nickname for John, right? I think so. Uh, he has written a book called The Like Switch. And my first thought when I first found out about the book was that, you know, this is a man who's going to teach us how to be liked, you know, how mm-hmm. to make sure people like us. It'll help in sales. It'll help in relationships, et cetera. But he's a former FBI special agent. <laughs> <laughs> that is the coolest part. And I'm telling you, the parts that I really think were my favorite parts in the book were when he was talking about um, uh, trying to f- figure out if somebody's lying. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that I remember specifically is I, I think his girl, his daughter's boyfriend came to the door and he, he looked up and down the guy and, and said, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Sounds like my dad. My dad, my dad would have been that way, except I was a guy, so he didn't care who I dated. Uh, the like switch, an, F- an ex-FBI agent's guide to influencing, attracting, and winning people over. By the way, in addition to the former FBI uh, qualifications, a title, whatever you would put there, he's also a psychologist, which obviously makes sense. He's a professor and an intelligence consultant. Yes. All right. <laughs> I need to have well, some consulting. You better be careful. <laughs> Don't use the word well. If he asks you a yes or no question, trust me. You know you know this part of the book, right? Yes. You could have said, well, I sort of kind of do. <laughs> well, know. I sort of kind of do. We learned a lot from your book, Jack. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pass the test, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack Schaefer, good morning, Jack. How are you? Morning. How are you? Pretty good. Where are you right now? I'm in uh, Los Angeles right now. L.A. I love L.A. Yeah, that's oh, that's warm. a Randy Newman the song. The Randy Newman song. I love Alan. You're old enough to remember Randy Newman, right? Yes, I am. Good. The last guy I said that to <laughs> had no idea who Randy Newman was. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you for being on the show with us. This is a fascinating book. It is way more than I thought it was going to be. And, uh, and uh, you know, knowing your FBI uh, background really was entertaining. Is that a good word? I, I guess entertaining is a good word. I just found, I just found it interesting, so... Um, you had to talk to people who might have been involved in murder, so you really n- had to know how to read between the lines and figure out if somebody's lying and all that, right? Yeah, as a, as a behavioral analyst for you know working counterintelligence, basically my uh, my job was to catch spies that were coming in from other countries and stealing our secrets, and Americans selling our secrets to other countries. Wow! And and when I sit down and talk to them, I either got to get them to confess or to convince them to change sides and work for us. Why is it? Why is it when when the bad guys are doing something, you call it intelligence? Well, uh, here's 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 the rule: when other people from other countries are spying on us, they're called spies. <laughs> when when we do the same thing to other countries, it's called intelligence. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that you got the code cracked, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I recently found a picture of myself online from when I was 16 years old. It was like a homeroom class shot that they took and put into one of the yearbooks. And I looked at myself and I say, gosh, you know, I remember those years. I never felt like I was liked. You know, maybe I was. Maybe it was just a psychological thing I was going through. But like Robin was probably always liked, right? You were probably always liked. Most of the time. And you felt like you were. Yeah. Yeah. I, do you think it's a guy girl thing or do you think it was just me, John, Jack? Well, I, I, I think there's, well, there's several reasons. I, I think if you didn't have a lot of confidence in high school, which very few high school students have, right. and if you're uncomfortable, you don't give off friend signals, and especially if you have uh, the, the idea that you're not likable. So it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But see, now I don't care if I'm liked. <laughs> the well, older that's, we that's, get. <laughs> yeah, that's and and I felt the same way because you know I'm confident in who I am now and if you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to. That's right. That's that's the way I feel too. Um who who's the book for? Uh, the book is fascinating by the way and uh, I just love the fact that you you kind of let us in a little bit on on how you were as a dad, how how you were as an FBI agent, etc. But who who did you write it for? 
I basically wrote it for the general public because you know I noticed in this in the tech savvy world that that the the younger folks didn't learn uh, the social skills that or uh, they they know them but they just didn't have enough time to practice them like like well I did when I was younger and we were out playing you know uh, baseball in the sandlot mm-hmm. and you and you get somebody angry. And if he happens to own the baseball and the and the bat and goes home, well, you got to manage a crisis, don't you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, well, and, and, and we constantly, you know, we're interacting, we're picking up these signals, we're practicing our verbal cues, and then when we get older and we're adults, we'll we'll well practice at at how to read people and how to how to know when to say something and when not to say something. But these young kids don't have enough time to practice that. That's probably true. Yeah. Because when you go on a play date, I mean, it's very structured. We didn't have play dates. We just went out and played. Yeah, really, play and we, dates. And we, didn't, and we didn't have technology. I mean, now you, you walk down the street. I, you know, I teach at Western Illinois University, and I just walk to campus, and you're constantly, all you see is little people in their tech bubbles, and, and they're floating around. And at best, maybe they'll bump each other like billiards. And That's an interesting right. observation. What are you doing in Illinois? I thought you lived in California. Well, I live right now in California, but because uh, it's warm. But uh, I teach in Illinois. Oh, you uh, do? We're gonna, yeah, we're going to move to Illinois uh, when when my wife retires. And what does she do? What's her, what's her job? She's a uh, a teacher. Ah, okay, okay. Um, so, so in in today's world, like for example, if we put something on Facebook, uh, we get all excited. Hey, I got a hundred likes mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Yeah. Well, that I mean, it's kind of weird that where the word like because now it's become sort of a way to just vote for somebody, you know? Yeah, but you know, on Facebook, you, you get these these shallow relationships. And uh, you, you can get a lot of them, and that might show a little bit of, you know, that insecurity, you know, by saying, you know, I got so many people like me, and you got less people to like you, so I'm <laughs> more likable than you are. <laughs> more likable than you. It's too and, funny. Well, <laughs> and, and, you know, and the bullying that goes on with Facebook. Oh, I know. I, I, and I, I teach these kids. That's why there's a delete button on the computer keyboard. You know, you, you really speak. It's interesting because the serious, real serious part of this, you know, just so you know, Robin and I are both 60. I, I, I get the feeling you're probably in the same ballpark as us. I just. I'm 60. Okay, so we're all the same. And we can kind of talk about this and laugh about it, but it's a real serious issue for somebody in school, isn't it? I mean. To be liked. I, and I remember looking at that 16-year-old picture of myself. I remembered. It was kind of an uncomfortable memory, you know? Yeah, because, well, but but nonetheless, you still learned how to deal with bullies. You learned how to, how to you know, I'm sure you had some friends, uh, a couple friends. No, no, yeah, I don't want to paint the picture I was a hermit or anything like that. But I, I, I felt like, you know, well, I don't need to, I don't want to go on the psychology couch with you, but I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> He's ready. Jack's I, I guess, ready. I guess what, all I'm trying to say is that I, rem, I remember, here's what I wanted to say. I remember when wanting to be liked was important. Yeah, because it made you feel good. It, 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 you, it was external validation that you were a good person and that you had some value. But now I, I'm liked by, you know, enough people, and I guess there's some <laughs> people who don't like me. And I don't know what to do about it. Not, I don't worry about it. No, you you can't worry about it because you, right now you have confidence. You know who you are. You have an identity, and if people don't like you, it doesn't affect your confidence as, as it did when you were in high school. Yeah, I uh, really like how you how you talk about body language in your book, especially yes. smiling. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, those, those are those are those are friend signals, and and we. You know, our brain constantly searches the environment for friend signals, and and we look for those. And if the friend signals are present, then our brain kind of ignores them. So we're not aware of what we're doing. We're only aware of when somebody sends out faux signals, then our brain says, whoa, that person could be a possible threat. And it typically comes out in the form of, you know, I don't like that person, but I really don't know why. And it's probably because they're sending out false signals. Could be. But you know what? We, I don't know if girls do this or not, but guys do this, especially when we're younger. Um, we like a girl because she's pretty, and then we get to know her, and it's like, oh, my God, what did I see in her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we would do ourselves a favor 
uh, as young men, because you can't go back to being a young man. But if you're a young man, listen to this old man. If, if you are interested in one girl, she's not interested in you, forget about it. Find somebody else. Because guess what? Like, you can like somebody who's not as attractive as the, the, the current famous model or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, and... and- and I, I coach my kids. I say, look, you, you want an average person who does average things because once you get into the, you know, the celebrity status or, you know, the, the wackos at the other end of the continuum, yes. you know, you, you, you've, got, you've got all kinds of problems. But if you stay in the, the two standard deviations, get an average person, you know, and with a great personality because, you know, and I've been married 32 years. And, you know, both of us don't look like we did 32 years ago. Mm-hmm. So you you have you have to develop some kind right. of deeper uh, bond with with that person. What is it, what is it with people, by the way, liking and falling in love with like Charles Manson and people like that? What is it oh, that yeah. young girl that's been with him, whatever it is? Yeah, you know, I I I I've been trying to figure that out. Uh, maybe you know, I haven't thought a lot about it, but just off off the top of my head, I I think what they need is is uh, recognition. They need to be different, you know. They they can't get along in normal relationships, so they seek these these more distant, you know, uh, relationships. Yeah, yeah. They don't really have to interact with Charles Manson, do you? Because you never get to see him. Which I don't. Exactly. She doesn't know. He's a nut. But anyway, uh, the like switch is the name of the book. We have to take a little break. I hope you like that, and, and we'll <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back. I promise. <laughs> Okay. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. We'll see clouds and breaks of sun today with highs ranging from the mid-60s to the lower 70s across the area. And mostly cloudy tonight with lows between the upper 40s and the upper 50s. Mostly cloudy tomorrow with a couple of showers around in the afternoon. Highs from the mid-60s to the lower 70s. And on Friday, clouds breaking for some sunshine, the high 62 to 66. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. You asked for it, Ocala. Now you got it from Bob Wines Camellia Gardens, a fabulous all week long, 20% off sale. Yes, folks, everything that's not already marked down is slashed by 20% this week at Bob Wines. It's a perfect time to stock up with winter color or get ready for spring. Everything, including annuals, perennials, shrubs, hanging baskets, and of course, trees, all 20% off this week at Bob Wines. And better yet, the camellias are blooming Come stroll through our five-and-a-half-acre, 60-year-old garden. See hundreds of old and new varieties. Remember, Bob Wines has a camellia show every day from now through April. Come see, come save, 20% off across the board this week at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens, Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Open daily till 4, Saturdays till 2. Homegrown, locally owned since 1952. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line and a new spoiler and a new Yep, and we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Experience the golden age of aviation with a ride on a fully restored 1929 airliner, EAA's immaculate Ford Trimotor, when it lands at Ocala International Airport Thursday, January 15th through Sunday, January 18th. You can also take a ride on EAA's World War II B-17 bomber, Aluminum Overcast, one of the greatest military aircraft of all time. Book your flights today online at b17.org and flytheford.org or call 1-800-359-6217. Hosted by EAA Chapter 812. All right, 19 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Jack Schaefer is on the phone. His book is called The Like Switch. He is a former FBI agent. The subtitle of the book is An an Ex-FBI Agent's Guide to Influencing, Attracting, and Winning People Over... Jack, I have a question for you real quickly because we really need to be fair to the book and we've, I think we're having more fun with you than talking about the book. But I, my first just one question before we do that, do, as, an ex, as an FBI agent, when you're talking to a, a witness or a bad guy, the actual perpetrator or a suspect, um, 
does it matter to you if he likes you or or do you sometimes it, it, you know you always hear bad good cop bad cop do you guys actually do that uh that you know that doesn't work you know what works is you know i try to get the guy to like me if the guy likes me he's he's more apt to tell me a secret and in many cases the secret's going to be putting him in jail for a long time but would you tell a secret to somebody you didn't like Oh no, good. Well, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. tell even to somebody I liked if it was going to get me yeah. in trouble. <laughs> well, well, it, yeah, you would. <clears throat> really? Because, because I, you know, the techniques in the book will explain why you would. Okay. Because if you like somebody, you're 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 more apt to to talk with them. You're more apt to help them. So liking is 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 powerful when you go through the world and. You know, the one thing people don't realize is there's a very simple rule or technique to get people to like you, and it works 100% of the time. And that is, if you want people to like you, you make them feel good about themselves. And if you make people feel good about themselves, they're going to want to be around you and with you as much as they can. So in in the sense of dating, if, if I'm dating and I make the girl feel good, uh, good about herself she's right. going to do everything she can to come back and see me again I think that's true I think that's true and and uh, it, it is a good lesson to learn uh, that it's not about you and I think it's another mistake that guys make is they make the date about them it's like a job interview and they're trying to persuade the woman into liking her do you know we do we do the same thing when we when we pitch song Robin and I write songs and when we pitch songs if if a song is rejected We've learned. Don't argue. I mean, if they don't like it, they don't like it. You can't. You can't. Te- you can't convince them to like it. Yeah. No, you can't. I mean, that's and that's one of one of the things that that I talk about in the book. You can't force people to like you. A lot of people say, you know, the stuff in your book, you're manipulating people to like you. And I'm saying, no, you can't. You cannot manipulate people into liking you. And if you do like someone that's that's has got bad intentions that's why i included those few uh, uh detection deception techniques especially you mentioned earlier the well technique it's a powerful technique the well tech there's so many different things in here by the way that that you'd have to go through them one obviously the radio interview won't reveal them all mm-hmm. It wouldn't be fair, no. first of all. Plus, there's just not enough time. But, um, but it, 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 Rob mentioned the body, the body language part. I wanted to talk on that a little bit. And I, uh, forgive me if you're bringing up something kind of superficial, but there's a video right now. I guess it's Jimmy Fallon, and what's the lady's Nicole name? Again? Kidman. And Nicole Kidman. Have you seen this video? No, I haven't. Okay, well, she's on his show, and she reveals that uh, at an earlier time in their lives, she was interested in him. I guess as a date. And he didn't realize it when she came up to his apartment, and he blew it. So, that, so, so if you watch this interview, you see him leaning forward, just as you describe in the book, and her leaning back. And it's almost like at that moment, even though they're both married now, mm-hmm. and both very famous, she, he's still saying, wow, you liked me at one time, maybe you still do now. And you can see him <laughs> leaning in, just exactly yeah. the way you describe in the book. <laughs> and then she's leaning back, of course, saying, no, that was the past. Right. <laughs> this is now. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's very interesting. Uh, you, you talk about uh, reciprocity in your book, yeah. which is very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, you know, one of the, one of the things that, uh, that we can do, and, you know, when you thank somebody for doing something, uh, you say, yeah, no problem, forget about it. And reciprocity is if you do something for somebody else, they're psychologically predisposed to do something for you. So if you get in the habit of saying, instead of you're welcome, you say, I know you do the same thing for me, which sets up reciprocity. Mm-hmm. I like and, that. And, and uh, what we do in interviewing situations is I give people coffee and food, not just because I want to. I give it to them because that sets up reciprocity. If I give them something, coffee or food, and they're predisposed to give me something back. And the other thing is 70% of all information is exchanged over food. So that predisposes somebody to talk when you're eating. I like that. Yeah. Very, yeah. very observant. Can, can I ask you kind of a personal question? Did you get interested in psychology because of your work as an FBI agent? Or did you become an FBI agent because you were always kind of a psychologist, even if it wasn't the title yet? Yeah, you know, I, I can remember back when I was a kid, you know, my mom would take me to the mall, and I'd sit there, and she says, what are you doing? I said, watching people. And, and she says, well, you're going to come with me? No, I'll sit here. You come get me when you're done shopping. I just want to watch people. And, you know, I, I look back at that, and I said, I, was, I always was fascinated 
uh, with it. And, uh, you know, I was explaining, you know, my co-author, uh, Marvin Carlins, is from Florida uh, State University, and we were talking about all the things I did in the FBI, and he said, boy, this would be great to put this in a book and to share it with people because yeah. a lot of people don't know how to date. They don't want to introduce each other right. to, you know, in, in job situations. Right. Yeah, you're yeah, absolutely even, right, yeah. Even uh, with wait staff, I mean, you got 30 seconds to uh, get someone to like you, and if they like you, they're going to give you a higher tip. Are uh, people automatically at a disadvantage when you do the online dating as opposed to meeting someone at a, a meeting or your church or even the bar down the street? Oh, yeah, you're at a tremendous disadvantage because what happens is you're, you're going from that visual mode where we're very good at uh, judging people visually. We know when we say something we should back off, when we should continue. You get in the online situation, you take us out of that comfort zone and put us into an area we're not really familiar with, and we run into a lot of problems. What, what do you think about the notion that people, sometimes we use this, uh, how, do I, how do I phrase this? When they say people want what they can't have, so, using my Jimmy Fallon, uh, Nicole, Kidman. Nicole Kidman story, let's say he wanted her at that moment. And of course, they're both married, so it's inappropriate, but just pretend they're not. Instead of leaning forward and making it kind of obvious with body language that he wanted her, what if he leaned back because he wanted her? Would that send a signal that, oh, I, can't, I want what I can't have for her? Uh, if she wanted him... Yeah, it would work because there's a psychological principle of increased restraint increases drive. And that, you see that with your kids. If you tell your kids, don't go here, well, that's the first place they're going to go. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. And, yeah. and, and if you tell somebody in a relationship, I'm going to make myself scarce, then you're going to want them more. And it happened to me in college. I, I met this really great gal. I went out with her on Friday night. And I really wanted to go out with her Saturday, but she says, no, I'm busy, you know, cleaning, you know, my hair at the sock door or whatever the excuse was. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, but she says, I, I'm available next Saturday night. And so I spent the whole week looking forward to, to this date. I bet you did. And, and, and then finally when she opened the door on Saturday night, I liked her a whole lot more than I would have liked her the following, you know, the previous Saturday night. Oh, that's night. interesting, yeah. Well, you know, so, a sandwich tastes good if you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, this is really uh, wonderful what, what you're doing because you do phrase them as uh, battlefield tactics even though it's, uh, it's, it's uh, everyday life and people have to treat it that way sometimes yeah I mean it's, it's you, know, I, I, you know I'm to the point now in my life where you know I want to make other people feel good about themselves I want to make their day easier and if I can walk up to a clerk or somebody in, in a restaurant and, and make them feel good about themselves then I feel good about myself because, you know, I've seen so much dis death and destruction in my job. It, I just want to make people feel good now about themselves and brighten their day. Can, oh, wow. can, I, I want to play a little game with you. We only have a couple of minutes, but I want to play a little game, and I know that you'll know what I'm doing right away. And I want you to explain what we just did. I want you to ask me if I read the whole book. Did you read the whole book? Well, I... Stop I, right there. See? Stop right there. <laughs> All right, now explain what happened. Explain what happened. And that's called the well technique. If you ask somebody a yes or no question, and the first word that they uh, respond with is well, right. it means they are going to give you an answer they know you're not expecting. And I always use my kids as an example. You send your kid off into the bathroom, say, brush your teeth. And you hear everything but brushing teeth, and there are all kinds of shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you come out and you say, did you brush your teeth? What answer is my child expecting me to hear yes yeah, dad yeah. i brushed my teeth if they say well it means they didn't brush their teeth yeah now now if he had asked me just for the sake of time if he had said to me did you read any of the book i would have said yes no yes. question about it right, right. Uh, yeah, well yeah any of any of the book means you read a page or the back cover <laughs> <laughs> ex-fbi agent but i know i honestly read more than that though all right yeah, oh. most of it. <laughs> All right. The, bo the book is called The Like Switch. I have a copy of it. You can read the whole book, and the rest of us have to go by. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to me. Um, <laughs> and how do we buy the book, Jack? Yeah, you can get it at uh, Audible for, for the uh, audio. You can get it at Kindle, iTunes, bookstores, the Simon & Schuster, uh, Schuster webpage. Nice. We have a, a Facebook page uh, with, uh, under the title The Like Switch. Very easy to get to. 
Excellent. And uh, it's available everywhere. Jack, thank you so much. We're out of time, but thank you. Come back again. All right, I will. All right, Bye. great. Yo, I'm Lillian Wu. The president's intended immigration reforms under attack by lawmakers in the House. Set to pass legislation linking President Obama's immigration policies to the Homeland Security budget. The bill would fund the department past February while rolling back his executive actions. The expected vote comes a day after the president called on Congress to pass a clean bill. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. There's a videotape out claiming responsibility for the deadly attack in France, which left 12 people dead at a newspaper office. Nasser bin Ali al Ansi a senior me- member of al-Qaeda in Yemen who has worked directly with the group's most senior leadership in Pakistan. al Ansi claims it was coordinated with the leader of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Fox's Catherine Herridge. The Paris attacks floated by the Boston Marathon bombing defense as a reason to suspend jury selection for at least a month, but the judge rejecting that bid for a delay. Fox News. We report. You decide. Last time your battery gave out, you were stuck on the side of the road showing the kids new and interesting ways to expand their vocabulary. So before that happens again, come into Napa, pick up a qualifying Napa battery, and get a $10 prepaid Visa card by mail. $10 buys a lot of soap. And with the way your kids are talking now, you'll need it. Conquer the job with Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, offer expires 228.15. Good communication is key to business, especially when you need to work together with people that aren't in the same office. So what do millions of small business professionals do when it's time to connect with remote clients and colleagues? They use Citrix GoToMeeting, the proven solution for meeting and collaborating online. Now it's your turn to see why. Visit GoToMeeting.com and click the Try It Free for 30 